Welcome to another episode of Impact Today. My name is Mark. This is my lovely wife, Victoria. We are excited today to uh, begin a new series of lessons. We're going to be teaching on the different miracles of healing in the ministry of Jesus. We're going to go through each of them. We're going to, uh, at least most of them, maybe all of them, We'll see, you know, the Holy Spirit might lead us differently, but our plan is to go through all of them and we're going to dissect each one because we believe that the Holy Spirit saw fit to put these specific testimonies in the scripture out of all of the healings and miracles that Jesus did, which was, that was innumerable, really. Uh, John said that if we were to record all of the the miracles and healings he did, he said, I suppose the books of all the world couldn't contain it. Now that might be a hyperbola. He's just maybe just speaking emphatically of how many miracles Jesus actually did. However, of all of the miracles he did, the Holy Spirit saw fit to record around 19 of them. And so we're gonna, we're gonna look at it carefully and because if you have any questions about the subject of divine healing, those questions can be answered as you look at these specific testimonies of healing. So we want to encourage you each and every week, tune in. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, like, share with your friends, podcast, same thing, share it. Uh, but just come back every single week, listen carefully, and ask the Lord to teach you to open the eyes of your heart, to have revelation knowledge, because great and mighty things God wants to do for you, in you, and through you. Amen. 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 So today we're going to begin with the healing of the nobleman's son. He was a royal official back in Jesus' day, and uh, there's a lot of to learn from this lesson. Amen. The story is found in John chapter 4. And remember, this isn't just a story, it's something that actually happened. Yes. Sometimes when we read the Bible, we think, oh, this is a story in the Bible. It's actually a historical account yes. of something that actually happened. So let's look in John chapter 4. We'll begin in verse 45. So when Jesus came to Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things he did in Jerusalem at the feast for they also had gone to the feast. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. That really grabs me, because if you're a parent, and you think about your own kids mm -hmm. and how desperate you would be if one of them was at the point of death. Mm -hmm. um, so and actually, you might have a child like mm -hmm. this right now. We have good news. Jesus will heal your child. Yes. Just believe and call on his name. So um, he was at the point of death. Verse 48. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Then he inquired of them the hour when he got better, and they said to him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, Your son lives. 
and he himself believed and his whole household. This again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. There's so much in there. A lot in there. <laughs> And that's why we're going to just take this nice and slow and, and look at it, dissect it. Uh, here we have the, the royal official. Uh, his son is severely sick, so sick he's about to die. And at this point in Jesus' ministry, actually, um, he has only performed one miracle uh, in Cana. That was the turning of water into wine. Now, if you go back and look at that story, that wasn't necessarily... A highly publicized miracle, at least initially. Um, it happened at a wedding. It happened at a wedding, but the people who were in on it were Jesus' disciples knew about it, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the, servants. the servants at the wedding feast, even the master of the wedding, the MC, so to speak, mm -hmm. he didn't know what had happened. So uh, we don't know how much the, the, that miracle, the news of that miracle spread, but we do know that the Bible points out here that the Galileans had been in Jerusalem during the Passover. And Jesus had performed many miracles there. And so the news of Jesus' miracle ministry had already begun to spread throughout Galilee. And now Jesus comes back into Galilee and he's return he returns to the village of Cana. Mm -hmm. And this nobleman, this royal official, now we don't know if the royal official had been in Jerusalem. We don't know that. But we do know he had heard of Jesus. Yes. And where he lived in Capernaum, he was 16 miles away, or about 26 kilometers, depending on you know, your measurement of length you <laughs> use around the world. But where we live, it's miles. But you know, in Pakistan and India and other places, it's kilometers. Well, 16 miles or 26 kilometers away. Hey guys, back then, there were no cars. Right, so there were there were <laughs> there were, and so it's quite a distance. And uh, and remember, there's no internet, there's no TV, there's nothing, there's no telephone. He there's, just heard. That. There's no electricity. Right. And so everything that uh, the news of things that happened was only simply by word of mouth only. And so he hears about Jesus. Now think about this. It's a royal official. Mm -hmm. That means he's important. He's, he, he's important. And he probably has money. He has a lot of money. And he has respect and, and honor. honor. Yes. Like it, he's a, he is somebody. He is somebody. But did you realize sickness and disease does not respect status? That's right. You know, there's people who are very wealthy today, right now. There's wealthy people around the world who are dying because of disease. Important people. Important people. Mm -hmm. People in uh, high government offices, uh, not necessarily dying or else they probably wouldn't be in their office right now. But you know what I'm saying? You could be a, a government official mm -hmm. or you could be a leper begging on the side of the road. You could be a wealthy celebrity, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Sickness does not respect you. Sickness only fears one thing, the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen. And God is not partial. It doesn't matter if you're wealthy or if you're a leper, if you're a beggar, if you live in a little hut or if you live in a mansion or if you live under a bridge because you're homeless. God loves you. And if you will put his word into practice, he will perform miracles for you. Amen. Amen. That's good. And so here this nobleman hears about Jesus and he decides, you know what? He's in Cana. I'm desperate. I need a miracle. And if I can get to Jesus, I believe I can get a miracle. If I can get to Jesus, now here's his mindset. If I can get to Jesus and convince him to come to my house, yes. my son will be healed. So he makes the journey to go to Jesus. And we're going to look in detail of what happens here. But before we do that, I want to talk about another healing story in the Bible. True story. Yes. And that is Naaman the leper. You know, I was just mentioning you could be a high government official, you know, man of importance or a little beggar begging on, our, on the side of the road. Well, there's a story in 2 Kings chapter 5 
uh, let, let, me, let me just go there real quick. Second Kings chapter 5 talks about Naaman the leper. Naaman was a, actually a man of great authority. Mm -hmm. So here's a man highly favored by his own king, the king of Syria, because he was the captain, the commander of the whole army of Syria. And this man was a great warrior, a mighty man of valor, a man of honor and respect, and highly favored by his own king. Yet, he had leprosy. Mm -hmm. And so he finds out, you know, I don't want to talk about all the details there, but he learns about a prophet in Israel named Elisha. Mm -hmm. Because actually one of his servants was someone they had captured in a raid. It was a little Israeli lady, a maid. And so this maid um, says to, uh, to uh, Naaman. Naaman and his household, you know, master, there is a man of God in Israel and through him, you can receive healing from the Almighty God, the God of Israel. Well, make a, uh, a long story short, they inquire about it. And he ends up going to Elisha's house. Mm. And he shows up, and Elisha's expecting him because Elisha told the king of Israel, You send that man to me. And so he comes with his servants. He's at the. the the gate or the, the doorway of, uh, of Elisha's house. And this is what happens. This is amazing. I'll just start with verse 9. It says, Then Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. You know what happens? He gets mad. Naaman gets angry. Because he was an important man. Yeah. He didn't expect to show... I'm surprised that he went all the way to Elisha's house. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like he could have just said, make that prophet come to my house. Mm -hmm. I think he could have done that. Mm -hmm. But he went to Elisha's house. He got there and he expected to be ministered to. Yeah. But Elisha doesn't even come out of the house. He doesn't even come out of the house. Notice what happens. And Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Now notice, Elisha sent a messenger. Elisha did not even come to meet this mighty warrior. Didn't even show him his face. And that makes Naaman very mad. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 says, But Naaman became furious, furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, He will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Notice what he said. Surely I said to myself. Right. See, Naaman had it all figured out in his own mind. Mm -hmm. You know, God doesn't do things how you figure it out in your own mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. We go to God in faith, and He heals us in the way and the method He chooses. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean we just wait around and say, well, God, just do something when you're good and ready. No, Naaman was doing something, and the word of the Lord must have come to Elisha and said, tell your messenger, go to him, and tell Naaman, Washing the Jordan seven times. You know, probably Naaman was a proud man, mm -hmm. and it's hard to receive from God when you're proud. Yeah. So God had the prophet do it this way mm -hmm. to expose the pride. the pride in Naaman's heart. But yeah. the good news is, that's not the end of the story. That's not the end of he the story. He humbled himself. Yeah. What happened? Well, before, you know, you talk about that pride there. A mm -hmm. lot of times, and this is a lot of times why people fail to receive healing. There's issues mm -hmm. of the heart that need to be dealt with. Sometimes the process of a miracle is greater than the miracle itself. That's true. Amen. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? Sometimes the process of a miracle is greater than the miracle itself. Why? Because in the process, we draw near to God and we're different. We're changed. 
something happens in us internally before the external miracle mm -hmm. happens. That's very important. So, he goes off in a rage and he says, aren't the rivers of my, of my uh, nation much cleaner than the Jordan River? I could have just dipped in them. <laughs> you know, he was very proud and arrogant, you know. And his servants were wise and they were able to speak to him and said, Master, if he would have told you to do something difficult, would you have done it? Mm -hmm. In other words, they thought, you know, this is a mighty warrior, a mighty man of valor. He's used to mighty conquests. And uh, I like to do great, mighty things. And yet all Elisha told him to do was to dip in the river, Jordan, seven times. Like anyone can do that. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. And finally, you know, they basically said, you don't have anything to lose. Just do what the man of God said. And so he decides to do it. He humbles himself and he begins to dip in the river. Not once, not twice, not five times, seven times. And it wasn't until he came out of the water the seventh time that he found out that he was completely healed of all his leprosy. Now, instead of being furious... He's wanting to give everything he has back to Elisha as a gift, and Elisha refused. Thank God for his servants. Amen. Thank God Amen. he listened you know, to he, them. Yeah. This reminds me of um, a crusade we were doing. Um, I can't remember where we were, but there was a man with a fracture in his leg, mm -hmm. and at the point of the fracture... The bone had chipped into 12 pieces, I think, if yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if you've ever had a bone that was chipped in pieces, but it's very painful because every time you move, those pieces of bone dig into your flesh. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember you gave a word to the crowd. If you can't run, if you can't walk, run now in Jesus' name. And some people did, and they were healed. But this guy came up on the stage afterward. Please pray for my leg. It's broken. It's chipped in 12 pieces. And I remember you said to him, did you run when I said run? No, I can't. My leg's broken. <laughs> Please pray for me. Man of God, pray for me. And uh, you went back and forth with him a few times. He said, I'm not going to pray for you. You have to do what I said. And finally, mm -hmm. he got a clue. Mm -hmm. And he took off running, and, and he was completely and instantly healed. Yes. Yeah. So whatever God tells you to do, do it. Do it. Amen. 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 God knows what he's doing. Yes. So And so uh, Naaman's healed when he, act, he believes and acts on the word of the Lord. Well, that brings us back again to the royal official... Uh, in Jesus' day, yeah. his son is at death's door. And notice what it says there in John 4. He begins to beg Jesus to come to his house 16 miles away mm -hmm. or 26 kilometers away. So just like Naaman, he had this preconceived idea like in his mind. This is how it's going to be. Yeah. I'm going to go to Jesus, I'm going to tell him what's wrong, and I'm going to bring him home with me. Yeah. That's the plan. That's the plan. <laughs> and Jesus didn't go with that plan. Nope. Amen. He says one thing, go your way, your son lives. Think about that. And the, you know, and, and the, the man was like, wait, 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 wait. Well, actually, let me back up. Actually, Jesus says this to him. He says, unless you people see signs and wonders... You will not believe. Now, he's actually talking about believing he's the Messiah. Right. He's not talking about believing in miracles, obviously, or else the man wouldn't have come to Jesus mm -hmm. for a miracle. The man believed that Jesus could perform miracles. That's why he's begging Jesus to come to his house. Right. He's talking about believing that Jesus is the Messiah. the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God. And some of you out there, you don't yet believe that Jesus is the Christ, the mm -hmm. Son of the living God. And unless you have a miracle, you won't believe. Some of you believe that Jesus was a prophet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you take it no higher than that. But Jesus 
himself said, I am the son of God. Yes. There's no way to the father but through me. Yeah. If he's a true prophet, then he didn't lie. That's exactly right. He's Amen. the son of God. So Jesus says that to him. And then the man, he forgets everything what Jesus is saying for a moment. He says, please come to my house before my child dies. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus says, go your way. Your son lives. Hallelujah. Now, at that point, the nobleman has a choice. He can act like Naaman. <laughs> yeah, he can act like Naaman. He can continue to beg Jesus to come, or he can get mad and just walk away, or he can believe and act on Jesus' word. So he what believed. does he do? He chose to believe. Mm -hmm. Says um, in verse 50, Jesus said to him, Go your way, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went his way. Amen. Notice that. The man, the, the nobleman believed the word and went his way. And now think about that. So now he has a long journey back home. And we can you can tell by the, the rest of the passage that it wasn't until the following day mm -hmm. that he begins to see anybody from his household. So he goes to his household, he gets there, or his servants meet him along the way, and they say, Master, Master, your son's alive, he's well. And the royal official asks, when, now notice what it says, he inquired of them of when his son began to get better. And they said, yesterday, now the New King James, the translation we're reading, says yesterday at the seventh hour. That's actually one o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So yesterday at one o'clock in the afternoon, the fever broke. The fever left him and he began to get better. And the man realized that was the very moment that Jesus said, go your way, your son lives, and he chose to believe. When the man chose to believe the word of Jesus and then act on it, at that moment, the death blow was dealt to the root cause of that disease. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. At that moment. Now notice, what is faith? We say this a lot in our, in our miracle festivals. Faith is not getting nervous, mm -hmm. it's not getting intense, it's not gritting your teeth, it's not saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Faith is simply expecting God to do what you know he said he would do. And so this man expected to come home to a healed son. Yeah. Because it says he believed. He believed. Maybe on the way home, he had to deal with all kinds of thoughts, yeah. I'm sure, coming at him. But he put his confidence into what the Messiah had spoken. Yes. Your son lives. So I don't think he was surprised mm -hmm. when he got home and his son was well. He believed. Mm -hmm. Now notice he, he believed, and this is where a lot of people miss it. He believed without any physical evidence. Right. He could not communicate with the people back home. No, he couldn't send a text. How's junior doing yeah. like there's nothing yeah he couldn't he couldn't send a telegram and get mm -hmm. it back he couldn't get on a landline hello hello how's everything going he all he had was the word of jesus mm -hmm. my son lives that was it he believed it he acted on it and he goes home hallelujah i like to say if you have a word from god you don't need anything else amen that's all you need is a word from God. That's right. That's all he had. Amen. That's all he needed. I, and I, for me personally, that has been something I've been really focusing on. Uh, if I have a need, uh, whether it's a financial miracle, meet a budget, whatever it is, my number one need, let's say I need a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. My greatest need is not that money. It's a word from it's God. Because if I have a word from God, I have everything I need. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Because God's word is what created the universe. God's word is what sustains us. God's word is what brings the provision. Believe and act on the word, 
and you will be okay. Yes. And what does his word say to you? Well, first it says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. If you need salvation, if you need the gift of eternal life, if you confess that Jesus is Lord, that you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe he died for your sins and rose again, you'll experience God's salvation. Your sins will be washed away, and one day you'll find yourself in heaven Amen. with eternal life. What else does it say? It says that when Jesus died on the cross, he took our infirmities, he bore our sicknesses, and by his stripes we are healed, and the prayer of faith will save the sick. That's what it says. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Whatever you need, you have a word for, from God for it. So first of all, let us pray for your healing right Thank now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you see every single person who's watching. You see every single person who's uh, listening via podcast or watching on the internet or watching on, on television. Lord, we lift them up to you. And right now we ask you to heal them from the top of their head yes. to the soles thank of their you, feet. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for strong hearts in their bodies. Yes. We thank you for kidneys being healed. We thank you for fevers disappearing. We command it to go in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Pains and fevers, you go Amen. in Jesus name. Amen. Blind eyes open, deaf ears open, paralysis leave. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for it, Father. We believe we receive. Hallelujah. Now, for those of you who have accepted Jesus, just say this after me right now. Dear God in heaven. Dear God in heaven. I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Is the Son of God. Is the Son of the God. Savior of the, the world. Savior of the world. You demonstrated it. You demonstrated by it. raising him from the dead. By raising him from the dead. I believe. I believe in my place. In my place. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. I believe. I believe. You raised him from the you dead. You raised him from the dead. Therefore. Therefore. I confess. I confess. Jesus. Jesus. Is Lord. Is Lord. He is the Son of he God. Is the Son he of is God. my Savior. He is my Savior. I receive Him now. I receive Him now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, friend. Don't forget to visit our website at impacttoday.tv. We love you. And until next time, be sure to feed on the Word of God and let the Word of God transform your life. Amen. God bless you. Impact Today is made possible by the generous support of the friends and partners of Global Impact Ministries International.